A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to talk about some updates and some new discoveries, including some potential new explanations about planet Mercury. And that's because even though we don't talk about Mercury much, we will be talking about Mercury quite a lot in the next two years, specifically after 2027, because this is going to be the official start of the Beppe Colombo mission that's going to be orbiting Mercury for many, many years, collecting lots of data, and finally answering some important questions. We've talked about this mission before, but it's essentially a joint ESA and Japanese Space Agency mission launched back in 2018 and on a track to orbit Mercury by 2027. And the reason this mission is taking so long is really because of its complex orbit. It's technically using a lot of gravitational assists from multiple planets in order to save as much fuel as possible and in order to then assume an orbit around Mercury for several years. And that's actually because technically Trying to get to Mercury, because of its really high velocity, is more difficult than trying to get to Jupiter. And that's the beauty and the complexity of orbital dynamics. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But this mission is supposed to finally answer many questions we have about Mercury, including its bizarre magnetosphere, its external and internal structure, and most importantly, its origin. Because all of these currently don't make sense. For example, we know it has a magnetic field, and though it's weaker than planet Earth, it's not supposed to exist. Because Mercury is smaller than Mars. And it's also geologically inactive, or at least appears to be so from the surface. So what's actually causing the field is currently unknown. Moreover, a lot of observations from the surface discovered a lot of really dark patches. This was actually seen by the NASA's messenger mission, and eventually turned out to be a lot of carbon. And specifically, a lot of graphite. And what exactly it's doing here, and how it got here, is also, of course, a bit mysterious. And so, since Mercury looks so bizarre, and is also bizarre on the inside as well, some of the researchers previously suggested that maybe Mercury came from somewhere else. It was possibly formed on the outskirts, and eventually ended up near the center. Alternative explanations suggested that Mercury was much larger before, but then somehow lost a huge part of its outer mantle, which eventually resulted in what we see today. This could have been the result of a massive collision that removed an enormous amount of the outer layer. With the biggest mystery just being the fact that it's also more massive than it should be, which of course implies that it has an enormous iron core. It seems to have more metal than it should have, and way more than even planet Mars. But recently, in January of 2025, Baby Colombo finally released some of its additional images from the surface, basically showing us a lot of beautiful structures once again. You can actually find these images in the description, but this finally shows us Mercury with incredible resolution. And though some of these features we've actually seen before and even discussed before, some of them are kind of new. For example, here we seem to detect bright lava flows that possibly happened billions of years ago. Whereas in this image, we see a feature known as Nathair Fakula, which seems to be the result of the largest volcanic eruption, and specifically a volcanic explosion, that created a vent 40 kilometers across. So back in the days, this planet was potentially extremely explosive. It also shows us the Fontaine Crater, which very likely formed approximately 300 million years ago. And these images are unique because they were taken from the closest approach to Mercury so far. But obviously by 2028, we're going to get even better images, and we'll probably be getting regular images pretty much every week. But going back to its surface and the discovery of graphite, not so long ago, Yong Jiangju and the team you see right here decided to see if they can actually find out what's underneath Mercury, assuming that it has composition that we know. Or basically assuming we actually combine a bunch of stuff we see on the surface and try to create conditions similar to what Mercury was like in the first few hundred million years. So basically they focused on a primordial graphite crust and assumed that back then the planet was probably more or less molten. And as a result, they discovered something somewhat surprising. Here this was actually done as an experiment by mixing different compounds known to be present on Mercury and included things like sulfur, titanium, aluminium dioxide, and then placed inside a carbon-rich graphite anvil press under ridiculous pressures of 7 gigapascals and temperatures of 2000 degrees Celsius. And so this would be Mercury approximately 4 billion years ago. And turns out that in their experiment, this ended up producing diamonds or actually a layer of diamonds that, if real, would be possibly several kilometers thick and hidden underneath Mercury's crust, and possibly pretty deep, hundreds of kilometers below the surface. 
And so essentially this experiment suggests that because there is so much graphite on the surface, there is also probably a bunch of diamonds, really massive diamonds, at least 200 meters thick and possibly representing at least 1% of the entire planet's mass. But naturally, possibly no way to extract them just because of the depth and because this is also a different planet. But still, a pretty cool experiment. But here there's actually an assumption that Mercury did not change much ever since its formation. And a more recent paper kind of questions this because they tried to explain all of these mysteries, including of course the enormous iron core, in a completely different way. Well, basically through a collision. And so in this study, Patrick Franco and his team decided to see if they can possibly recreate Mercury through various computer simulations by using very specific collisions. But collisions with objects that we know can easily form in the early solar system. And these collisional simulations are pretty common. This is actually how we explain the formation of the Moon when billions of years ago an object referred to as Theia collided with primordial Earth. And though not everybody accepts this explanation today, it's still the best explanation for why the Moon and Earth exist. And so something somewhat similar was now applied to Mercury. And the thing is, this technically kind of makes sense because we know that pretty much all planets in the solar system experienced collisions in the past. For example, a collision on Venus could explain some of the features here as well. I believe there is another video in the description talking about this. Likewise, Martian dichotomy or the fact that the south and the north part of Mars are so entirely different has also been explained as a potential collision on the northern plane of Mars. The north here is actually very squished and so collision was possibly one of the best explanations. And of course, the fact that Uranus orbits on its side has also been explained as a massive collision back in the days. And so, why not Mercury? As a matter of fact, Mercury, because of its proximity to the Sun, could have experienced even more collisions. And so that's basically the focus of the paper. But in a lot of earlier studies, the impacts were mostly either a kind of a grazing impact or basically involved a collision where just the outer shell of the planet was stripped from the object. Here though they did something different. They assumed that these were very similar large objects, possibly colliding almost face on or basically in the way you see right here. So the assumption in this study was bodies of similar size and mass and bodies not so different from the hypothetical Theia that collided with Earth. So basically a kind of a primordial planet. Now we know that Theia was very likely similar to Mars or about 0.1 Earth masses. And so for this study researchers tried to do different masses and tried to see if they can actually change the velocity of collision and the angle of collision, eventually discovering a simulation where they actually did create something super similar to Mercury. And here it had to be a planet of approximately 5.5% the mass of Earth, but the core, the iron core, had to be really large, 70% of the mass. And that was of course the difficult part. And so in their simulation, by using a primordial object that was about 0.13 Earth masses and contained a 30% iron core, or technically having two of these objects, they managed to recreate a collision where Mercury was formed with extremely similar composition that we expect. As a matter of fact, the overall collision was not so different from the one that created the Moon. And here the remnant matched Mercury's current mass within just about 5%. But most importantly, it had a very large iron core fraction, anywhere from 0.65 to about 0.75, which was very close to 0.7. In other words, by using a simulation here, they managed to prove that it could have been a head-on collision between two larger objects that ended up producing Mercury in an extremely similar way to how a similar collision created the Moon when Theia collided with early Earth. Now here this was just one simulation out of many, but it definitely shows us that this is a very likely and very possible scenario. And since we know these protoplanetary collisions were extremely common early on, here this is possibly right now one of the best explanations. Which would also suggest that objects like Theia, or basically objects about 0.1 Earth masses, might have been super common and might have been actually colliding with a lot of things out there. And one of these objects that only had a minor collision potentially ended up as Mars. And so definitely an intriguing explanation and something that hopefully Bepi Colombo will be able to either confirm or disprove in the next few years. And so starting 2027, there's a big chance we'll be talking about Mercury quite a lot. And there's also a big chance that within just a few years, most of its mysteries will be solved because of these super accurate observations. And if this planet was created by a collision, there's a very big chance Bepi Colombo will find evidence. 
But until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos about Mercury in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who learned about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.